Hi, my name's Adrian with Applied CAX, and welcome back to another one of our five-minute tutorials with FEMAP and XNASTRAN. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at an introduction to composite and laminate modeling. Here's our outline. You can see we've got a lot to cram into five minutes here, so let's dive right in. The model that I'm going to be working with is really set up, ready to go, besides the mesh. We've got boundary conditions, mesh sizing, all of that. So we'll start by creating our material. And we're going to be using a 2D orthotropic material. So you can switch your type over here. And we're going to be using this material model to represent a unidirectional carbon fiber tape. Now direction one always associates with your fiber direction, so it's going to be much stiffer. This is when we're actually pulling on the carbon fibers. Direction two is going to be associated with our matrix direction, so this would be pulling on the epoxy. We have our in-plane shear stiffness and then our two out-of-plane shear stiffness values. You don't need these for a 2D element, but if you want one material card to be consistent, regardless of your element type, you can populate those now. This is everything that we need to get the model to run, but to help in post-processing, we're going to put in some stress limits here. All right, direction one, tension on the fiber. This is quite strong. Once you go into compression, it doesn't quite have the same strength, though. Direction two, pulling on the epoxy. Not nearly as strong as the fiber, but does a little bit better in compression than it does in tension. And then finally, there's going to be our in-plane shear strength. All right. Now, that's just our composite material. Now we need to create a laminate with a layup. This is where we choose a material, a thickness, and an angle and we can start adding these to our layup one by one. And you can see you can update the angle and it remembers your material and your thickness. Since we have a symmetric layup, we can create part of our layup, choose the portion that we want to mirror and use the symmetric, symmetric button to reflect that over. There's a little preview showing what you've created. All right, there's our layup. Let's create our property. And we're going to switch from the standard plate element type to a laminate. We'll choose our layup. We'll give a bond shear allowable. And for this, let's use the, uh, the same bond shear allowable that we did for our in-plane shear allowable. And we'll choose our failure theory. Now, our failure theory is going to take the stresses on the individual plies and our stress allowables and calculate failure indices. At this point, we can mesh our part. I'm just going to mesh all surfaces with our laminate property. <clears throat> and now we need to set a material orientation. So it knows what those angles are in reference to. So if we say modify material orientation, the majority of the structure, I'm going to align my zero angle with the global X direction. But you can see for these tabs here and here, that's not really going to work because it's going to be normal to that surface. So what I can do for these is use an API. All right, so let's uh, find our missing material orientation with an API program. This is a nice little program that will check all of your elements and any of them that do not have a material orientation, it'll create a group. So I can come back in, assign a material orientation to just the elements in this group here, and this time we'll use the global Z. You can visualize your material angle by turning on material direction, turn on this little checkbox. And you can now see that all of my elements have a consistent material orientation. All right, let's analyze and take a look at the results. For laminates, we're going to get a lot more information than we get with our standard plate element. So let's activate 
our output set here. Go over to the post processing toolbox. You can deform just like you can with standard plate elements. And you can contour. But when you take a look at your contour options here, your output vectors, you're going to get stress and failure indices for every ply. So we have nine plies. We've got a lot of information to dig through. They do give you this output vector here, max failure index, which is going to envelope all of the different plies and find the worst failure index. You can see we're at 0.4, so we would still be passing as long as we're below 1. Um, but what I like, I like to look at the stresses as well. And so this is another opportunity for an API. This API was written by Andy Haynes, one of the FEMAP developers, and it creates a nice summary of your stresses across all plies. So you choose the output set that you want to summarize. It will create a new output set in your model. And with this output set, if you take a look, you've got major principle, minor principle, Max Shear, and Von Mises. So it's going to look across all of the all of the plies and find the maximum Von Mises. If you bump to the next output set, It'll tell you which output set that max value is coming from. We only have one output set, and it's saying our, our max results are coming from output set one. And you bump along to the next output vector, and it'll tell you which ply that max value is coming from. So you can see for the majority of the model, it's either coming from ply number nine or ply number one, those surface plies. All right, thanks for staying a little extra beyond five minutes for this tutorial. Um, as always, you can go to the Applied CAX website for more information on composites, materials, meshing, post-processing. We've got some white papers and longer seminars dedicated to this topic. All right, thank you very much for your time.